get about reading people's experience and spirituality and morality. Right. We got a, what we must understand is we come directly from the Creator, original people. We don't come from Africa. Africa, we don't come from Kemet, we don't come from none of that. Those are baby places. Those civilizations are young. When I say young, we're talking about 6,000. Even if we give them the benefit of the doubt, the 10,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But the planet's been here far longer than that. Hey, hub to the real ones. We just back with another presentation. And, uh,. <laughs> I hope y'all ready for another ride on the ether bus, man. We just charging up. You know what I'm saying? Shalom. Peace, peace. And um, we've gotten this feature before, but, you know, we're going to get it like it's the first time. So, you know, it's best that you just get comfy and suit up. Because we're about to, you know, <laughs> go for a cosmic voyage. Peace to the real ones. Let's get it back. Speaking about reading people's spirits and spirituality and morality. Right. We got a, what we must understand is we come directly from the Creator, original people. We don't come from Africa. We don't come from Kemet. We don't come from none of that. Those are baby places. Mm. Those civilizations are young. When I say young, we're talking about 6,000. Even if we give them the benefit of the doubt, the 10,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But the planet's been here far longer than that. The original man has been on the planet so long that no one knows his record. No one knows his record. No one knows the record. No one knows the time. No one knows the place. You know what I'm saying? They can't tell you when. You just got to keep that in mind, you know what I'm saying? Especially in the detail of, <laughs> of civilizations, you know what I'm saying? Why? Because everybody's lying, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's lying. Everybody's lying. And that's just the gist of it. You know, no one wants to tell you the reality of things because the less you know the more control is exerted over you you know but they know what's at you know what's sleeping what's dormant but right here when you surf the wave of dry nation you know it all happens to just spark off you wake up and then it's go time from here. We come to here. That's what I was going to say. To straighten things out and to go through situations to show forth and prove the greatness we are by having someone other than ourselves rule us and destroy us. And then we rise from the dead and come back into power. You know what I'm saying? You know what's going on? And the fact that, you know, he's basically saying we come to here. <laughs> we're going to dive into this topic and we're going to get it in, you know, specific details. And um, we're just going to see how this all turns out. So peace, peace to the real ones. We just want to um, talk to the dragoons one time. If that's all right. You know what I'm saying? Because this is only for the Dracons, man. For real, for real. And like I said the last time, all these drops are, you know, interlinked, connected to one another. So, you know, we just picking up from the last one. And I come to realize that, you know, all of my drops have been interlinked. I've given them different titles and chronological orders. 
but um, <laughs> they all bounce off one another. And this time around, it's like, man, the flow couldn't be more pure, you know, than from when we first started. So a hot to everybody that's been surfing away from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And salute to, uh, you know, the new ones. We're just looking at prehistoric man, the so-called human race and its dispersions, all right? How long has the earth been peopled and when and where was the beginning? You know, a lot of niggas want to act like they know, you know, I'd be the first to tell you, <laughs> I don't know much. But what I do know is that I'm here to learn. You know, we just post up in the back of the classroom. So this is just for those that's in the back of the classroom. You know, to a hi to everybody that's on this topic man you know I make these types of videos this material because you know there are other channels that do too and they know what time it is just like I do so the article that we have is a prehistoric battle which appeared in April last has called out many letters of inquiry time will not allow individual answers so this attempt must suffice for all inquirers up to date during the past 10 years many phases of this subject have been discussed through the columns of the journal but in order to bring the facts before the minds of readers that they may they may the more fully appreciate the subject it will be necessary to use some of the data that have appeared during the past years the exact time and place of man's first appearance on the earth will probably never be known to a certainty which is very interesting because i remember for the life of me i felt like i came across this article and i wanted to throw it in one of my videos, maybe I did, maybe one of my older ones, <laughs> but I can never find it again. It was so crazy to me because I tried to find this and I, I, I don't know what happened, you know, and running into it again. I was like, man, it's amazing how the wave come right back. You know what I'm saying? So hawa, hawa for the wave. It says. The exact time and place of man's first appearance on the earth will probably never be known to a certainty. You know what I'm saying? So we can throw dates and times, billions of years and blah, blah, blah out the window. You know, but just for the sake of the topic, we talking about, you know, just the ones that have been here. Because we right here at home. <laughs> This whole thing is our home, you know, as we'll touch on. So far as known, no recognized authority has ever attempted to give us any light on this part of the subject. Individual writers frequently arrange a few isolated facts or supposed facts into a sequence for the sole purpose of proving this or that theory. Nine tenths of them have assumed that man originated in southern or southwestern Asia. There is absolutely nothing to prove the assumption. You know, just to keep in mind, you know, we just talking greater Asia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? India superior. But um, we'll get to that in a bit. All right. So continuing. There is absolutely nothing to prove the assumption. It is much more probable that man originated in the present North Frigid Zone. The Earth first cooled within this zone. Within it are 
found the remains of tropical plants and animals. The elephant, rhinoceros, and many other tropical animals were once abundant in Siberia, Lapland, and Alaska. Right. One thing is certain, man retreated from the north as the ice of the glacial epoch gradually moved toward the south. <laughs> and you got to remember, man, you know, being a Jedi, you slice through the hijack. All right. Which is why we do such presentations Because they always want to bring it back to this ice It's always a glacial thing for them You know what I mean And there's a reason for that If you're over there you know, in the classroom Over at 432thedrop.com For the naturalists You would know why Right we, we touch on this So you know I would suggest you do that Shouts out to you know Nah, it's viral. Five eyes, my tie battle. You know what I'm saying? Yosef the real. We talking, you know, Templar, Urban Reed. Just to name a few of the Ether Squad, man. It says, it is not necessary to go more than 14 miles from Kansas City to prove this. In a bed of glacial drift near Courtney in this county, Jackson, are relics that show the handiwork of man. These relics are not abundant, but several have been found near the middle of the deposit. Among these may be mentioned a rude, unpolished shirt or so-called flint pipe. If you were to find a mound of earth and also find an old shoe or fragment of pottery within or under it, you would be forced to conclude that man existed before this mound was built. Here are relics of man within it. Now, this is what we are forced to conclude with regard to many of the glacial deposits found throughout the north half of the northern hemisphere. In the vicinity of Kansas City are numerous glacial deposits, principally sand and gravel. What are the proofs that they are truly glacial? They contain granite, cyanite, and quartzite, and many other mountain rocks that do not occur at Kansas City, nor within 100 miles of it. Nearly every deposit is rich in free gold, but the gold has been iterated so fine from its long journey that it is not practical to mine it. The deposit mentioned above 14 miles east of the city yields from $1.50 to $2 per cubic yard. Some of the glacial deposits of Howard County 70 miles east of here yield twice as much gold. During Governor Woodson's administration in the 70s, our legislator, our legislature appropriated $5,000, which the Geological Survey used in testing these deposits for gold. Again, these deposits contain an occasional piece of catonite, the famous Indian pipe stone, which is found at only one place in the world. And that is several hundred miles north of Kansas City. In fact, there is there is sample proof or ample proof that these deposits are of glacial origin and that man existed before these deposits were made and consequently before the glacial epoch. You see what I'm saying? So first they were trying to say that this was of a glacial origin. Now they're saying that they're realizing and they're forced to realize man existed before a glacial epoch. All right. And that's before the ice age. Yet every time you get a chance, you're getting some type of movie, some type of book, some type of entertainment in the form of so-called history, letting you know that the dawn of man came from out the ice. I mean, they about to drop a new Ice Age movie, am I right? <laughs> In animation, you know, for the young ones. It's no different than NASA telling you you're spinning on the ball. All right. We already know the original natural ones didn't rise from ice 
When was the glacial epoch? The southern hemisphere is now going through a glacial epoch. There have been many such epochs. They alternate between the northern and southern hemispheres. The precession of the equinoxes from year to year is such that one proportion of the earth either in the extreme north or south is gradually turned away from the sun and becomes glaciated. <laughs> and we already know this to be false, right? Because it's when the sun is closest to the earth that it's winter. And it's when the sun is furthest away from the earth that is summer <laughs> so all this moving around from the sun and it creating ice is false but i will tell you that i think that you know this earth was once put through a destruction that resulted in the so-called ice age and if you've been surfing the wave right here we've been saying this since the jump All right. It says this procession causes a cycle in 28,600 years and a grand cycle in from 286,000 to 411,000 years. 11,000 years, sorry. It says that during one of these grand cycles, there will be a glacial epoch or ice period in each hemisphere around its polar region and extending from one half to one third of the distance from its pole to the equator. The deposits near Kansas City were no doubt made during the last glacial epoch in the northern hemisphere, according to the calculations of astronomers, and they do not differ much. The last glacial epoch in this part of the world commenced about 241,000 years ago and ended about 81,000 years ago. Man has lived then in this locality not less than one quarter of a million years. That's 250,000 years, according to them, right? But when you dodge all hijacks, I mean, what is time? In Switzerland and other parts of Europe, he has lived equally as long. I have examined thousands of rude flint or church knives collected in Europe. Australia, throughout the United States, strange to say, they show from 8 to 10 characteristics in common. My friend, Mr. T.J. Tidswell of Independence, discovered most of these, sim most of these similarities. I have added two or three since he first called my attention to them nine years ago this discovery and scores of others that might be correlated with with it prove the unity of the human race <laughs> all right and um what would they mean by that right the unity of the human race under similar conditions, man has produced like results from Siberia to Patagonia and from Australia to Alaska. It says the earliest races were no doubt nomadic and never became sufficiently centralized until after the last glacial epoch to enable any of them to attain a very high degree of civilization. Now, when they start to speak like this, um, Again, this is when the imposing of a train of thought is introduced, right? Because in one instance, they're letting you know they have no idea, you know, when man came into existence, yet they have in their version a lockdown date as far as when man developed civilization. Because in order for that theory, you know, to be proven, you know, Man had to be nomadic. But when you're a tautinous, right, indigenous, you're like a tree. And your crystallized trees grew everywhere. 
not just to one locality, not just to one surface and then spread from one point to another. Nah, nah, they were everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere. They sprouted out from the ground, from the soil, because that soil, that ground was rich in the minerals and chemicals that are of the elements. And, you know, the same is with you. But, you know, for that to actually go into play, you know, it has to be considered that everyone was nomadic. <laughs> you know, from one from one origin, you know, one start, bang, you know, you get the whole population of the earth just spreading out. But, you know, as we'll touch on, it's, it's different, you know, creators for different purposes as far as this this species right you know what I'm saying not 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 every human is made equally <laughs> you know we caught on to your drive you know we was able to pick it up and now 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 I see it for what it is now I see you for what you are you know you talk a good story man tell a good story <laughs> but we got you you know we've we were able to catch on and um yeah now that i know where you've been coming from this whole time it's only right that i um, set the tone straight and that's just for the tribe so we're gonna go ahead and carry on with this read so as prior to that time, so far as discovered, they produced no polished tools nor implements. They attempted nothing that indicates a high order of intellect. Before the glacial epoch, there does not seem to have been any focal point at which the, prob the probably scattered tribes ever collected themselves. It is doubtful whether fire had come into a general use from the condition of the bones of animals that have been found in close proximity to human remains and relics in some of the caves of Europe, it is inferred that pre-glacial man ate much animal food and that it was devoured in a raw state. <laughs> you know, again, we were getting the perspective from, you know, relics that were found in caves of Europe. And then they blanket this whole generalization as this origin. But this is, again, false, right? But we'll see right now. We'll draw the distinction, you know, as we cross the line. After the Ice Age, there seems to have been a number of centers of civilization. It is probable that there have been dozens and scores of dispersing points from which immigration has diverged and overrun a considerable portion of the habitable world right. <laughs> it says after correlating all data that have been made public to the present time the conclusion is unavoidable that the oldest civilization was in yucatan in central america future discoveries may change this conclusion it seems that Egypt was first peopled by immigrants from the Yucatan. Space will only allow will allow only a few facts that clearly indicate the truth of this assertion. It says the first pyramids of the Yucatan are some of the are some of them much larger than any found. You already know, right? <laughs> I don't want to take up too much time, but that's basically what you know we wanted to touch on. All right, they're just talking about the early Egyptians and the Mayas of the Yucatan had the same system of reckoning time, but the Mayas developed a system that was far superior, which antedates that of Egypt. All right, and we're just talking about 
<laughs> Prehistoric man. We just talking about you, the kinds. But when it goes into this, you know, this so-called research, when it goes into, you know, what they try to put off on you, <laughs> you know, there is no distinction. There is no, no fogging up your vision anymore. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the next one. Peace, peace. So like I said, you know, we were just talking India Superior, the Greater Asia, as you can see, right? I mean, that's what these Macs are, you know, depicting. You know what I'm saying? We're just... <laughs> we talking original. You know, they talking Tartaria. What about India Superior? Huh? What about the Khans? What about prehistoric man? We're talking, you know, the first point where it all popped off. Huh? You know, he was been flying around and things like this. You know, yo, 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 high tech was, man, through the roof. And again, we're just talking India Superior, right? When we get the cross reference, as you can see, La Florida, right? La China, you know what I mean? Peru, Brazil. Con, con. So, carrying forward, you know, these these things is nothing new, cause it's been old. You know, the concept may feel new; it may seem new to you, but you know, we just talking ancient cosmology, man. <laughs> I told you we was going on a uh, cosmic voyage. Peace. And that's why I was saying I hope you don't think flashing lights in the sky. <laughs> you know, who they refer to as the capers. Custodians, you know what I mean? We're just talking original man. The natural ones, Ahab to the red breeds. Karameu was Indian, the first man to fly. Alright, and this, with this article's I mean, this came out on what? February 16th, 1974, London. All right, we're just talking India Superior. All right, if you surf in the wave. I mean, look at the different types, right? You wonder where they get it from. You know, this has always been something that the Naga does, you know. Even to this present day, as we'll see in a bit. 
this is this is you. You know, they want to talk a glacial epoch, right? But you don't get technology like this stepping out the ice and chipping off flint. <laughs> That's not how this works. You know, it's definitely not how this works, my nigga. And, you know, such things shouldn't be all too fascinating. Especially if you knew who you were. Who you are. We still talking star seeds. Ahab. You know what I'm saying? See... We picked up on your job, like we said, right? And we know now, you know, where you're hitting us from. You know, anytime the Naga wants to stand up for what's theirs, there's a deep level of supremacy attached to it, yet, you know, there's no oppression coming from a view of the Negus. You know what I'm saying? And why not call it how it is? You know what I'm saying? If we're gonna attach names and say such things, <laughs> you know, the blacks, right? The blacks of this, the blacks of that. Why is that always the only topic? The only way of, uh, Describing something, you know, they claim to be the, uh, the Aryans, right? <laughs> the Aryans. Okay, we're just talking star seeds, yeah. So, with that being said, you know, let's continue. See, you know, we just talking about the ancient ones. All right. And um, as you'll see, <laughs> this has always been an ether war. Now, what they won't tell you is that these variations were spawned from those they refer to as the Manu. Who are the Manu? AKA the Lords of the Moon? Bang. All right. And you see what he's, what he's riding on. All right. I mean, this, Edom influence goes back. <laughs> but that's a different topic for a different day. But look at the variations, alright? And look how they look up. The Manu. Those responsible with the engineering of mankind. You know, because they had to take something from the original source in order to proceed with this uh, root race. According to uh, Theosophy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as, you know, as I was saying, the natural ones already had the capability. All right. They want to refer to you as the Lumerians, right? But then don't go in death into saying how the Lumerians came to be. Why? Because they say the, uh, what would it be, the fourth, third, first rate root races are so far removed, there's no uh, telling how they looked and what happened to them. Yet they know 
you as the Negro, the royal Negus, the Naga, right, are the descendants, the living ones of these Lumerians. Alright, so when we want to talk about the high point, <laughs> you know, they was rolling up on you, you already had a lot. And you don't get something like this after an ice age. But I can tell you that after an ice age, a lot of this was destroyed. Because <laughs> that's how this goes. Especially when you're in the pure water flow. You know, like I said, I understand where the drop came from. And now I know I, I can see you head up. You know, you tell a mighty good story. So, you know, we're just telling the story of our own. You know, because we're talking crystallization technology, ancient crystals, you know. And this was the source of manifesting, you know, enlightenment in real time, the expression of illumination. But at this time, the need to express such things was done in this matter to achieve that light bulb, that switch, right? The harnessing of energy, that which is the ether, as we'll touch. You know what I mean? This was... This was like the cream of the crop as far as that goes. These days in time, we don't have to necessarily build a pyramid to reach ascension. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's a marvelous thing for us because it proves the genius. It proves the plan, the order. Hawa hawa. All right. And we see how it was popping off and why an ice age had to happen. You know, things got out of hand, man. And as the star sees, these ether wars were heavy upon you. The frequency war was a real thing. 440, 432. You know, but like I said, you know, these niggas be lying, man. They be lying. <laughs> and it's a cold game. It's a cold game. But they don't want to tell you about you. You know, they just say, oh, the Irish, the Irish, they came out and built civilizations. No doubt. I mean, even if we are talking Fomorians, what about the Ramals? <laughs> you know what I mean? What about these Lemurians? And why does Lemuria have to be a hypothetical landmass no longer here? How come that's just not one of the many names of America? They want to disconnect us so hard as the untouchedness, right? And say, well, the blacks weren't the only ones there. Nah, that's not what we're saying at all as far as who was where. But when we're talking just the prime, you know what I'm saying? What's the whole point in... Participating in the labeling of supremacy where none exists. <laughs> it's very funny. But we 
we're going to get to this next one, right? Because we're just showing you how you've had this tech the whole time. And they know. And they're letting you know. So peace, peace to the tribe. Peace, peace to the tribes. We off to the next one. Can you see what's going on, my nigga? A Bugatti spaceship. <laughs> crystal bracelet right Let's see what's going on now pause real quick if we're talking you know this crystallized material that he's wearing what do they refer to it as vibranium right what would vibranium be a special special rare element and like I said, we were always talking elemental, right? Because you are the elemental charge. So if we're talking elements and we're talking what you been have the capability of doing, we were just looking at a so-called spaceship, a craft, right? That was shown, you know, throughout throughout time. They they referred to the the what were they called the the, the Ben Manus. <laughs> And this is a Bugatti spaceship, you know, peak the archetype. We're still talking to Royal Nagoose. Elemental. All right, let's go. I mean, check it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't know when you got here. They don't know where you come from. You know, but we're going to talk about it because we just talking star seeds. All right. This yours? Who are you? Who are you, my naga? That is the question. Hey, you to the real ones. <laughs> Alright, so here we're digging on this tab, right? The story of man's creation. And, you know, we're just digging on star beans. Alright? It says, humanoid races are the rule, not the exception. These races descended from many life forms, reptiles, insects, dinosaurs, birds, and other life forms mankind cannot begin to imagine. I, and, um, you know, when we was digging in the Canaan Eye series early on, you know, I just didn't know how much, how, how much we was really on it. All right. Amazing series, by the way. You know what I'm saying? It says one of the oldest star races in this sector of the universe is the reptilian Aryan race, which descended from dinosaur ancestors. <laughs> In the star system of Orion, right? Dinosaur, right? Uh, you got your own thing with that. It says, ruled by queens, they created the most powerful empire in this galaxy. 
Aryan warriors were unmatched for veracity and bravery, and the Aryan Empire was unmatched in power and size. You know, like I said, they were real big with this Aryan talk, and I was wondering, like, like, huh? But like, you know, now we got it for sure. We're talking root races, huh? Root. Shout out to the bro. That is getting to the root of it all. All right. Millions of years of countless battles had allowed this empire to develop advanced war strategies. Among these, the Aryan practice conditioning or reprogramming to control conquer populations and make them assets rather than liabilities. Enemies became obedient servants of the reptilian queen's throne. In this way, the Aryans eliminated resistance. Does that sound familiar, my nigga? Hmm? Does that sound familiar? Enemies became obedient servants of the reptilian queen's throne. In this way, the Aryans eliminated resistance. The major practicing of conditioning and reprogramming. You know, we'll be touching on these reptilians, you know, throughout this presentation, but keep in mind that, you know, not everything is so reptile the way you would imagine. It says an unexpected evolution of another race in the star system series posed a threat to the Aryan Empire. Though not as old or as advanced as the reptilians, the warriors of the Canis Empire, a dog-like race similar to wolves, made up for any lack with their fierceness. Even the most disciplined of the Aryan warriors feared these vicious barbaric Syrian warriors who stopped to devour the flesh of their enemies on the battlefield. <laughs> We can't make this up, right? <laughs> Canis Empire, dog like race, similar to wolves. It says rapid advancement of the Syrian warriors threatened the very existence of the Aryan Empire. As a result, the queens approached the Syrian kings to offer an alliance. A treaty was agreed upon that the delineated that the deline that the delineated which sectors of the galaxy each empire was to rule for a time, the warriors of both s empires fought side by side. All right, <laughs> and um, you know that's basically what we want to come and catch, right? It says. Let's just keep it going real quick, all right? With the birth of a new star system, with the birth of a new star system was born, the Syrian king was quick to claim it. As the Syrians began to exploit its resources, this new system became an outpost for both the Aryan and Syrian empires, and the power and wealth for both continued to grow. But eventually, war broke out again, this time among rival Syrian kings. In the end, Aryan forces joined King On. Entire worlds held the opposition, held by the opposition with totally destroyed including their moons and colonies much later king on sent his son prince ia and daughter princess nin hersag both genetic scientists to rebuild the destroyed world of aridu and once again tap into the valuable and much needed resources found there they successfully restored the atmosphere Refilled the seas with life, recreated plants, trees, and flowers, and hybridized many kinds of creatures. All right, so we got that the planet Iridu was reborn, right? It says new creatures were produced to inhabit the planet 
one such creature, the, the Apa Mus, was an eight beast hybrid whose only purpose was to serve and to slave in the fields and mines. But this beast was different from the others. It can understand orders and could communicate. Princess Nun Herzog had gene genetically engineered the eight beast hybrid by using her own DNA. The beast grew in intelligence and began to teach his own quickly multiplying offspring. <laughs> All right. We're getting a little context of, you know, how this whole thing went down. It says when another species of genetically engineered workers underground dwelling shedding lizards. All right. Now, um, this is what I wanted to focus on. The shedi. Okay. It says the dwelling shedi lizards revolted and seized power. The ruling star beings fled from the planet with the opposition out of the way. The Shetty use mind control and programming techniques they learned from their masters to alter the memories of the remaining star being descendants. Mankind's knowledge of star beings was replaced with myths and legends. Shetty dominance has been and continues to be challenged by many other star races attempting to regain control of Earth and mankind for their own purposes. The struggle for power goes on. All right, and this is basically, you know, a little context, man, to this eat the war we've been building on. All right, and you know, touching this topic is gonna it's gonna get a little heavy, especially since you're you know you're building right here on this channel. So um, we're gonna see what else we got up here. Peace, peace. So when we get back to the star seeds. Um, they're not going to let you know that you were the first to, you know, travel it all. Time, space, whatever. <laughs> you was the first to do it all. Right? And we were just digging on this Bugatti spaceship. But we're going to really take a look into just how our ancestors also depicted such things, such events, such interaction. I mean, we get examples from the script, right? Let's see what else we get. Now, this looks like the Vamanas in a way. You know, and we see the Mayan Naga right here. Looks like another Mayan Naga right here. Of some sort. <laughs> it could be a humanoid, I don't know. Check it out. Alright. Keep in mind, the article said that the civilization of man was coming out the Americas and we know that the root race that the Negroes belong to are the Lemurians this is before Atlantis you know and that's just a lack of better words so <laughs> what are we talking about now, I've gotten this in previous drop before, right? But again, you can see the natural one right here amongst various variants. And isn't it a trip that we're now in the time of variance, the variation? Also, check out this right here, right? This snake. Now, and, you know, originally I thought to myself, like, damn, this could be a, a, a dome kind of thing in a sense, right? It reminds me of the Egyptian one with, with, with 
I think the the so-called woman stretched out like she's like bent over. She represents the the sky and all that, whatever her name would be. But it also gave me the Ouroboros vibe as well. But you know, who knows? Looks like crocodiles actually alligators with the enclosement right but you see the crafts right you see the original man right here and you see the capers and the variants of these capers you know your script calls these things <laughs> well, we'll, well we'll get to it Alright. But remember these these beans didn't hold their place. They decided to break order. Alright. And you can see it's still the same same nagas. Still the same nagas. Alright. So when we're going backward we're talking a remote time, which is why I'm showing you the contrast. Come. So, you know, you've been dealing with these things. This is nothing new. Like we said, we was in that bag, right? Well, this is that Anunnaki bag I was talking about. And notice how it comes to, you know, all these other ones. Right? They're all some form of, of animal. But when it comes to the Negus, the original Amaru Khan, you still resemble what they refer to as man. Letting you know where the drop comes from, everyone knows, is an animal form. <laughs> That's over there in Egypt too, right? Land of the beast. Yeah, that Candy Nights nice part two, man. Wow. That's a wave surfer right there. But you, you see what we're, what we're digging on? You know? We're just digging on Quetzalcoatl. And again, we see that bag. But notice how this looks like also a craft of some sort. All right put into the stone this also looks like a craft of some sort and um, you know you had many of these depictions you know this was not necessarily anything new you know am I saying Nox is going into space nah but what I'm saying when you start seeing flashing lights in the sky <laughs> It ain't anything apocalyptic. And you know, I'm more saying that the resurgence of such technology and capabilities are just being bought, brought back to you. Because in true essence, man, these beings, right, of different bodies and frequencies of existence have what they refer to as a quarantine over this plane. And this quarantine, and this is literally the language they use, right? They call it a quarantine. Because we're talking about a period of harvesting. So during this quarantine, they're not allowed to make themselves visible as a thought form. Only to those selected. And those selected that see the thought form in the wave patterns that are projected out for them to interact with are the ones in consciousness ready for that interaction 
everyone else you can't tell a nugget nothing right now about nothing <laughs> and they count on it and many of them have invested their own technology to trick you with lights in the sky but the Nagoose has always had access to such technology as you can see right here right this is another craft all right this is another craft man we still talking Bugatti spaceships <laughs> you know you don't get technology like this popping out the ice my nigga that's just not how this works you know, and you come from royalty, you come from a true line of of, of of high stature, you know, but things got out of hand, you know, because you forgot the creator, you forgot what this was all about, you forgot how to use the power of the everlasting rock. So you're no longer building with everlasting rock. But with that being said, we no longer need to build with everlasting rock to reach ascension, my nigga. But we just have to keep the code. See? We're just talking about you. You know, you were the emblem of this land they refer to as the Americas. You still are. They want to talk Aryan and Tartary, huh? <laughs> I. Well, we just going to talk to Khan in this Khan versus Khan war. Because you was dripped out, you know? As the Negoose. Know, but they don't want to talk about this you know they don't want to let you know hey we've learned from you <laughs> you know they don't want to let you know about the root races but they're in agreement that you know you're still the blacks you know, they ask questions like, why do blacks believe they come from Egypt? <laughs> and then in the same breath, say, hey, we as Aryans, but you still black. Damn. Luckily for Drop Nation, you know, we have some real, real way surfers. Hawa, hawa. When we digging on these root races, the third root race, according to Theosophy, and now the fifth star seed of that root race, you have the Negro, the Negritos, and the Negrios. We're talking Lumerians. Right? And when we get to Atlanteans, we have the Ramal, the Tatal Vatali, the Totecs, the Tyranians, the original Semite, which I think is funny because they also talk Phoenicians. <laughs> The Akkadians, the Mongolians, and the Japanese Malays. Alright. And that's the fourth root race. When we get to the fifth, we're talking about Aryans now. And then we get the Aryan Semite. Hmm. Considering what we was just digging on as far as these Aryans go. Okay. Nonetheless, we're talking about the prime, right? We're talking about the Negro. 
right here it says the Lumerians. So why not address this as such then? If you're the Aryan, right? If you're coming out the stock of the Aryan. Because who's engineering this right here? Breaking this down, like we said, the Manu. How come you don't mention the Manu? <laughs> Maybe you do. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Carrying on. You know, we took this to a height never before seen. And the evidence of such can be felt. It's seen everywhere. You know, we're talking about for this ice age. And even though it's been a reset where the Aryans kind of, you know, snuck in. The DNA unlocks this memory that is the precious flow. All right. And that proof is everywhere. All right. You know, nobody disappeared. It's just we've been harvested and continue to get harvested without knowing because this is all about the harvest you know until you tribe up and choose up you're all just peas in the pot all right see that'll let you know about the errands does speak on Atlanteans to some degree you know but they won't they won't necessarily give you the drive but then they talk a good story notice how it says the Romals Giants Mahogany Red we've got the drop on the Romals before part one We're just talking Lumeria. Right. And they said the shaded figures represent land at the time. And I would assume that everything else was ice, according to this graph. All right. And, um,. According to them, things began to shift and the such. But, you know, from what I can see, America's still here. Through Lemuria, through Atlantis. <laughs> so why not just call us the Americans? As we see... C.R. Patterson in the Suns was the one and only so-called black created, owned, and operated automobile manufacturer to ever exist. In 1939, the company was driven out of business by the three big, the big three auto manufacturers. You was building your own car, my nigga. Cause like I said, that Bugatti spaceship, <laughs> that's been you. You know what I'm saying? It's been you. You been building. No doubt. And they still don't want you to remember. So crafts of the sort shouldn't be a shock, my nigga. This should this should be something that you have high confidence in. You've been doing. 
And, you know, to everyone interested, you know, I've been getting a lot of, you know, just people asking how can they contribute, donate, you know, for these drops. We do have the Cash App description or link in the description. I mean, (laughs) the Cash App link in the description. So feel free to just, you know, hit that up. Do as you please. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily have... uh, The super, the super chats, you know, hooked up, but y'all can, you know, support right there. You know, they talk about, they don't know what the previous Lumerian races looked like, but the stone tellers right here, this is what they look like. That's what these stones represent. The giants of old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to get it right now. Just keep in mind, right? It says the Ramals were giants. Atlantean. Con Con. Giants. We just digging on you. Because we got that the Negro is the Lumerian. So we're going to get a little more. Yeah. Now the period represented by map number one shows the land surface of the earth as it existed about one million years ago. But the Ramal race came into existence between four and five million years ago, at which period large portions of the great southern continent of Lumeria still existed, while the continent of Atlantis had not assumed the proportions it ultimately attained. It was upon a spur of this Lumerian land that the Ramal race was born. Roughly, may be located at, s- at latitude seven degrees north and longitude five degrees west where a reference to any modern atlas will show to lie on the Shanti coast of today. It was a hot, moist country where huge antediluvian animals lived in reedy swamps and dank forests. The Ramals were a dark race, their complexion being sort of a mahogany black. Their height in these early days was about 10 or 12 feet truly a race of giants all right truly a race of giants but through the centuries their stature gradually dwindled as did that all of the races in turn and later on we shall find they had shrunk to the stature of the four foods man they ultimately migrated to the southern shores of Atlantis where they engaged in constant warfare with the six and seven sub races of the Lumerians then inhabiting that country. A large part of the tribe eventually moved north while the remainder settled down and intermarried with these black Lumerian aborigines. Alright? The result was that the period we are all dealing with the first map, there was no pure blood left in the south and as we shall see it was from these dark races who inhabited the equatorial provinces in extreme south of the continent that the Totec con- conquerors subsequently drew the supplies or their supplies of slaves all right <laughs> now as we'll see they said that they intermixed with this Lumerian Aborigines, right? And when we're digging on, on just who, let's let's just get it real quick, right? And when we're digging on these giants, on these Ramals, these are your Easter Island statues. Okay, we just read on the Ramals right now. Alright. And like, you know, we were digging on. You was already building this technology, right? 
<laughs> you know, you was already building these crafts. Right? You think I'm playing? Let's dig on it. <laughs> now, how is it that this design looks just like the other one? Right? I mean, it looks just like this. All right, my nigga. This ain't no joke. <laughs> You've been pushing the envelope on these crafts. We just talking Bugatti spaceship. All right. Don't let them get to your head. Don't let them confuse you through this law of confusion, which is how they're operating. They're operating in the law of confusion. But we're going to surf the wave. We got some things to address. All right. I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everyone's magnetically charged. We just built an electricity. Hawa, hawa. So I'd like to welcome you to Jeremiah 421. And um, we're going to be building with different versions. All right. And I want you to know that this is the JPS Hebrew to knock translated into English. And we'll get different variations as we continue this read. But let's build, alright? I want to focus on verses 23 through 26, but we're going to start off right here at 21. How long shall I see the standard? Shall I hear the sound of the horn? For my people is foolish, they know me not. They are sottish children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and the hills moved to and fro. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of heavens, of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful field was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. And before his fierce anger. For thus saith the Lord, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and I have not repented. Neither will I turn back from it. Now, I want you to keep this in mind, all right? First of all, there was no man. There was no light in the heavens. And behold, the earth, it was waste and void. I want to key in on his waste and void. I want to key in on the heavens and them having no lights. I want to key in on the fact that there was no man and that all the birds of the heavens were fled. Fled, right? Also want you to keep in mind that the fruitful field was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down. What cities are we talking about in this time frame when there is no man to build? 
See, this verse, you know, 23 puts me in the mindset of Genesis. But what's interesting to me is the fact that we're talking about cities that were broken down. And we're also focusing on how the heavens above are black. All right. This is the American Standard Version. Here we have the Lord translated into Jehovah. The heavens are still black. Alright, this is the Geneva. Alright. The heavens above shall be darkened. The cities were broken. There was no man. Alright. And it's the same thing for the KJV. But I want to dig on light, right? Illumination. Happiness. Right? There was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. All the birds of the heavens were fled. What does it mean? They were chased away. Driven away. Forced to flee, a wanderer, these birds, right? They were fled, were they fled from these cities that were broken? Because there was no man at this time, right? We're gonna carry on. Let's get it. here. We have Job 38:4, right? Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou has understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon the found? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. He who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as it had issued out the womb. All right. The stars. All right star in the sense of blazing a star all right shiny okay shiny all right we're talking about a star when the morning stars, multiple morning stars that sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The morning stars, multiple. Okay. Are these the birds that fled? Are these the ones that had cities before the earth had size? Hmm. Before it was full of life. Hmm. What's going on? The morning stars sang together. Right? The morning stars. When the morning stars sang together. All the sons of God shouted for joy. So these stars are 
related to as the sons of God. Okay, that's the connection we're building on. All right. I hope you're surfing the wave because we're just talking at Genesis right about now when the earth was without form, without void. <laughs> All right. We're going to get to the next one. Peace, peace. Here we are at Job 9. We're going to look at verses 6 through 9 and 13. Who shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble? Who commanded the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars? Who alone stretched out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea? Who maketh the bear, Orion, and the Pallades, and the chambers of the south? Who doeth great things past finding out? Yeah, marvelous things without number. <laughs> lo, lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. Behold, he snatcheth away. Who can hinder him who will say? Unto him, what doest thou? God will not withdraw his anger. The helpers of Rahab did not stoop under him. The helpers of Rahab, huh? Rahab. The, the Geneva. Okay. He removeth the earth out of her place that the pillars thereof do shake. Right. And we're talking about the stars, right? Who closes up the stars? He that maketh the stars, Orion and the Pallades. God would not withdraw his anger and the most mighty help does not stoop under him. Now, why does this say mighty in this version in 13? But over here, we read Rahab in capital. Job 9.13. All right, when we go to the KJV, we have a translation of the proud, right? The proud. But when we look at the proud, we have Rahab. You see it again? means insolent proud according to them but in the geneva or excuse me the jps it's capitalized all right furthermore when we carry on to the next one let's see let's get to the next one Isaiah 7, 30, excuse me, Isaiah 30, 7, all right? For Egypt helpeth in vain, and to no purpose, therefore I have called it Rahab that sitteth still. Rahab, the Geneva, right? For the Egyptians are vantile, are a vanity, and they shall help in vain, therefore I have cried unto her. Their strength is to sit still. For, <laughs> for Egypt health is in vain and to no purpose therefore I have called her arrogancy alright arrogancy but it's that Rahab right now we're seeing that they're talking about this Rahab a lot alright and I'm trying to figure out <laughs> Why is Egypt being referred to as Rahab? What is this Rahab? We're just surfing the wave. Alright, we're going to get to the next one. We are in Isaiah 51 verse 9, right? 
And it reads, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord, awake. As in the ancient days, in the generations of old, art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Whoa. Whoa. In the ancient days, in the generations of old. Huh? <laughs> now you see why we always talking about the ancient ones, huh? Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab, Rahab, and wounded the dragon? Rahab. Right? We're still building on Rahab. Except now, we can see it for what it is, right? Blusterer. Proud. Strength. Supposedly, but why would it be capitalized? I've never seen of someone cutting pride. Right, wounding a dragon. Art thou not it that hooed Rahab in pieces that pierced the dragon? Awake, awake, put on the strength, O arm of Jehovah. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to understand, right? this Jehovah with this Jehovah be the patron of the said opposition and these ether wars bragging to cut Rahab into pieces which is the monster now let's see It says from this root, right? Let's see if I can get it. They're not gonna let us get it, right? But let's see. Rahab. Hmm. Rahab was cut into pieces. It is being said that this Rahab is the dragon. And remind you, we've only opened up this presentation for the dragons. Let's see what else we got on this Rahab. Ahab. We're in Psalms 89, verse 9 through 10. Thou rulest the proud swelling of the sea when the waves thereof arise. Thou stillest them. Thou did crush Rahab as one that is slain. Thou didst scatter thine enemies with the arm of thy strength. Again, we're running into this Rahab, right? Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces. Thou hast scattered thine enemies. Rahab into pieces, right? Here we have it in verse 10 again, Rahab. This time it's different. It says that is boaster, an epithet of Egypt. It keeps changing. What is this Rahab? Right? You know, the elder said, we didn't come from here, but we come to here. Some would even say that we came here from this Rahab that has been broken into pieces. You know, they say it's the remains of this said asteroid belt. <laughs> hmm. I mean, this all took place during the same time as this Genesis drop. Right out of Jeremiah four twenty three. The heavens are dying, the earth also is dying, as for the world and the fullness thereof thou hast founded them. See how they're mentioned it's mentioned with the heavens and the earth? 
and the seas this Rahab and how it was basically destroyed let's see what else we got I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me behold Philistia and Tyre or Tyre with Ethiopia this man was born there alright mention of Rahab again Right. Once again, this Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Right. Rahab always capitalized. Now my thing about that is, if this was only a representation of pride, why is it capitalized as a personification of something alive? You know, that is the question that we're digging on. That's what we're building on, on this Rahab. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they say, you know, where that asteroid belt is, <laughs> is nothing but, you know, pain. And then from this pain and fear, You know, these souls were then put into the realm of material to incarnate, to rise from up out of that fear. All right. But, you know, we're going to see for ourselves in a few, which is why we're building on this, right? So, Ahab to the real ones. We carry on. I want to bring your attention to this Isaiah 14, verse 12. <laughs> Watch this, right? It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weakest the nations? All right. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. All right. Now, what I want to dig on without taking too much time is, again, we're talking about the sun of the morning. Now, we were already digging on verses before the morning stars. Go ahead and bring that back. Right? We were already digging on morning stars. So we learned that there were multiple morning stars that were also the sons of God. When we're digging on Lucifer, it is the sense of brightness, the morning star, right? The morning star. All right. And then we've been saying that, you know, this is about the ether wars, the star seeds. Now... I wanted to build on that because I want you to see a little something about this said Lucifer, right? <laughs> Which means, oh, they don't want to give it to me. Okay. Let's go right here, right? It says it's from the root word of sound, but usually of color to shine, to shine simply to shine all right to shine keep that in mind we're just talking about the shines <laughs> isn't that you know what the sopranos the italianos refer to as the blacks the shines you see what's going on so we're gonna do a little etymology some breakdown 
Peace, peace. So when we're digging on the etymology of Lucifer, they just automatically want to throw in Satan. <laughs> but it also means the morning star. The root being light. Light brightness. To carry, to bear. Keep this in mind. Also to bear children. What? To bear children? Interesting. It literally means light bringing. But they say this is Satan, right? But knowing what I know about previous drops we build, the shining and light is what drew my eye, my, my attention. So I'm digging on this word Satan. And I said, man, everything about the society is backwards. So what if I looked at Satan backwards and reverse the spelling and you know what I got you know what I came across this tab right here as we let it build all right I got this term right here nata Natas, if you add an S. It is a Hebrew word. Natas, right? Which means to plant, fasten, fix, establish. To plant and to establish. To be planted, to be established. I said, wow. <laughs> you know, wow. Because this is what they're referring to you as. Those who are planted, fixed, and firm, as in the firmament. Those of the firmament. Once again, right? Natas. Like I said, we just spell Satan backwards and got Natas, which is the firm, the planted. So here we see this Jehovah. Excuse me, wrong one. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Oh, it's done this again. Hold on, y'all. You know, let me get it back. So here we see how, you know, this Jehovah's, you know, coming over to Lucifer, the son of the morning. All right. It's very interesting. Because in the actual text, it doesn't refer to anything of so-called Satan, right? And he's upset at the fact that supposedly this Lucifer said that they will ascend into heaven. Ascend. Which is, you know, to burn again, to be high, to carry up. But to burn, keep in mind, right? To burn, cause to burn the day. All right, ascension, the stars, which is the shining. All right, the shining. Flow with me. Digging on it backwards, we got Natas. Natas, which is to plant, to establish, to be established, to be planted, to be fixed. That is firm and immovable. And when we're digging on Rahab in a strong concordance, we get a storm or a sea monster. And we read how the scripts were referring to Rahab as a dracon, a dragon. This dragon, right? See the capitalization in it? So now we're talking about an entity. Maybe we're talking about land. We'll see, right? Because this Rahab was broken into pieces. 
And they say that this asteroid belt is the result of this Rahab being broken into pieces. But what would that mean for space? What would space actually mean? Shouts out to the Ether Squad. We talking Five Eyes, Ma, kind of fresh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> A couple of the real ones to like keep me, you know, rejuvenated in this search. But you know, what is this space talk? You know, we always hearing the hijack speak of. We gonna get to it. We gonna see. I'm gonna bring your attention back to this Genesis, and we gonna pick up from there. Hey, huh? It seems like every time I'm in this book right here, something crazy happens in these drugs. <laughs> I just always jump back to Genesis, man. Let's catch it, right? In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Right? Light. Now, they said this Lucifer was this exactly right this light the morning the sun the star the brightness all right so are we talking about illumination all right illumination and how come you know again this isn't used in the form of the lord obviously there's a distinction between the Lord and this God. But that's a different topic for another day. <laughs> We're just building on this light, right? In this early beginning of Genesis. We're talking about the beginning. Okay. It says the earth was without form. And this stuck out to me. The earth was without form. That means the earth was without a surface. Without a surface, so there is no land. All right, it was in confusion. It says empty place. The earth was an empty place without form. It was of nothingness. Right, it was without form, without a surface. All right, and void. It was empty, right? Emptiness. Now keep in mind this emptiness, right? And darkness, which is what? Misery. Sorrow. Destruction. Death. Night. Ignorance. Sorrow. Wickedness. The earth was in darkness, right? In, in, in destruction? Destruction of what? I thought this was the formation of the earth. What was destroyed? What was in misery? Remember, we were reading that Rahab was smashed into pieces. Which is what they say that asteroid belt is. Right? And from this the unexpected destruction left the souls that were still intact in a perpetual state of fear misery destruction and that these souls had to once again live which is why the earth was reconstructed and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters okay the face We're going to break all this down. All right. So, let's see what we get. Peace, peace. So, I was digging on space, and I'm like, man, using the terminology that they use can be quite frustrating when you really want to get to the interior of a meaning. So, I'm thinking, you know, what is space, right? Especially if we're just talking about in the beginning. 
and I found nothing that would help except when I came here. It says space is referred to in an astronomical sense as stellar depths, immense emptiness. And what did the script say? That the earth was without form and void. Right? Void being the emptiness. Okay? The ruin. An undistinguishable ruin. Alright? The darkness. Which was the destruction and misery. So the earth was destroyed. Which is why it was, it was without form. Right? It was without form. A surface. It was confused. It was an empty place. So I said this emptiness, huh? So I had to learn more. Like, what is empty? At leisure, not occupied, unmarried, containing nothing, unoccupied, leisure, right? But when you really go down and you break down the etymology of leisure, you come to this. Originally, freedom from fear. Freedom from fear. It, it's fear. <laughs> the emptiness is fear alright so that empty void of space is the fear the, the containing of nothingness the fear and I had to break down fear some more and we have <clears throat> a sudden attack, a calamity, danger, harm, distress, deception, deception, all from fear. But when we look at the script, let's see, I was playing with this, get it back. When we look at the script, it tell us about the darkness. The darkness being the misery, the destruction. So now we see where the fear is coming from. The fear that is of the emptiness. The emptiness that is of space. It's starting to get a little weird now, right? We're talking about the fear. The fear. It said calamity. What's calamity? Calamity is the damage, the state of adversity, a great misfortune or cause of misery. Wait, isn't that what the script said? The dark, hence literally darkness, figuratively misery, destruction. We're talking about a calamity, which is what the fear is, right? Damage. Adversity. You know, don't don't we face adversity as the natural ones on the regular? Adversity, the condition of misfortune, hardship, difficulty, distress, wickedness, malice. This is what the script was talking about. All right, <laughs> this energy right here. This is what we were dealing with before God said, let there be light. The adversity. And I'm like, damn. We we're talking about a state of hell. This was brought out from hell. Right? Form. Which is the Morpheus, 
right? Form, the image and likeness, the physical form, the appearance. A sort of kind of condition, right? Morpheus, to be formed is of Morpheus, which I found to be quite surprising. All right. So the earth was without form, the physical form, without a surface, without beauty. It was it wasn't in the likeness of anything. And it was talking about this leisure. This leisure is the free time. The lack of idleness, right? The lack of hurry. Free will. All right. And where did we get that from? leisure which which word was it? the empty at leisure right so we're talking about a trap inactivity bunch of a bunch of nothing <laughs> this is without time all right and when we're digging on the face the face of the deep right the deep when we get the deep what is the deep the deep as in the abyss the water supply the tahum right to make an uproar to agitate to destroy all right the face of the deep the face so the face of the deep is the appearance right the countenance I got all of this just from digging on space, and I'm like, man, you know, I'm understanding what, what we're talking about now, and I'm seeing it for what it is. You know, we are legit talking about <laughs> something crazy. They're not trying to tell you. All right, this is the form. So the face of the deep, the form of the deep, you know, they like to talk that space is the universe and the universe is what we refer to as the cosmos. All right, my naga, which means literally turned into one, one, one verse to turn, to turn back, to be turned, convert, transform, translate, to be changed. So the universe is all about ascension. Right? Why was that something that was deemed upon? Well, when we dig on ascend, it means to rise, right? Whether in air or in water. But it means to rise as a star. Ascension. Someone doesn't want you to remember that you're a star. They don't want you to achieve this ascension. Who you may ask? (laughs) Well, there's this thing they refer to as a demiurge. 
a being that is responsible for the creation of the universe what they you know have come to recognize as a maker or creator but was a heavenly being subordinate to the supreme being that is considered to be the controller of the material world and antagonistic to all that is purely spiritual right and we were getting how these Aryans are on the verge taking over until their slaves which were the Canis Empire the dull light warriors switched up on them <laughs> all right we see where all, where this is all going and um with this demiurge you know they're trying to keep us as food but when we dig on this Rahab this Rahab sounds a lot like Tiamat Shouts out to the bro, right? Because the bro is mentioning Tiamat. Right? Now they say Tiamat is a primordial goddess of the sea. And we got, I think right here, right? Rahab was the sea monster. Alright? And there is some drop. That refers to, you know, Tiamat also as a so-called planet. All right. She was referred to as a woman and is described as the glistening one, the glistening one or the shiny one. All right. It is suggested that there are two parts to the Tiamat mythos. The first in which Tiamat is also a creator goddess through a sacred marriage between different waters, peacefully creating the cosmos through successive generations. All right. It says in the second, whatever that would be, Tiamat is considered the monstrous embodiment of primordial chaos. Some sources identify her with images of a sea serpent or dragon. And that's what our script was telling us, right? How Tiamat or this Rahab was a dragon. Rahab, doubt that has wounded the dragon. Come. So we're just talking about the glistening one. That which is that shines, right? And we'll see how right here that Tiamat has been claimed to be cognate with the Northwest Semitic to home or the deep abyss. So we're talking about the dragoon the shattering the breaking of this dragon all right and there's a lot to dig on when it comes to this tmi <laughs> as it see right here tmi was the shiny when we were digging on this so-called Lucifer, son of the morning, the brightness, the shining, that which is to shine. All right, we've been talking about this dragon this whole time because they call you the Natas, which is those that are planted. We're just talking Satan in reverse. All right. When we're talking about the souls of Tara, it says with current major magnetic shifts, matter substance is becoming less dense and changing its chemical structure. As it becomes more fluid and flexible, there are articles or things rising to the surface. This reveals an assortment of artifacts and objects manifesting from other timelines as well as parasitic debris coming to the surface for witnessing. Future. It says, future timelines reveal the fragments of various 
kinds of bodies, energetic bodies and spiritual bodies that were exploded and became intermixed with the matter substance in the earth body timelines from the 5D earth matter connected to the souls of the Tarian body that exploded became a type of radioactive decay intermixed into the soup of matter that came into the physical into this physical dimension from the explosion event and the magnetic manipulation of the time and space fields the world soul of Tara became a part of the atomic body of this physical planet stuck and strewn between the first and fourth dimensions we are in a phase of time where the matter composition is changing into something less dense while in its less dense states we are able to move out of these artifacts assorted bodies and consciousness remnants as a result some of us may have been helping in the recon and transit of the souls of Terra, which is connected to you know <laughs> the reclamation of the Christos mission alright and Tara is just another spot for earth alright it says Tara has been used to describe the future earth in its 5D form okay so again we was talking about this shattering it says that Rahab was broken into pieces right it was broken into pieces that's what we read let's get this back right was broken into pieces right here straight up Thalf has broken Rahab into pieces alright when we're digging on the cosmic ocean We're just digging on the celestial rivers. That is the primordial waters. All right. So the cosmic ocean is the cosmos. The cosmos is just water. We're just talking about Wata. So when they ask you what is space, you tell them, "Hey, man, that's 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 some fearful water right there." All right. <laughs> we just talking Wata. The emptiness, the emptiness that is fear. The fear of what? Huh? When well, we're digging on to home. cosmic ocean all right this is the deep this is what they refer to as the cosmic waters until there was a surface the land that separated the waters you have the waters that are under and the waters that are above and the land separates them both that's why when you drill into the land you can reach water from there as well. All right, it says the firmament was a was a vast solid dome, which meant firm. Right, firm. I'm talking firmament. So when we was digging on the natas, where is it? At? Which is to be plant, to be fixed to be established that is firm as in the firmament alright <laughs> cause they not gonna tell you that you know this space could be this you know this realm of fear man this is what they refer to as the knot of fear. The knot of fear. Let's continue. So as in the beginning, darkness was upon the face of the deep. The ether of space. <laughs> and like I said, man, we got the drop. 
now we understand where y'all coming from. You know, now I see why y'all be digging up the ether. But if we're talking about this darkness, you have to be talking about the Lumerians, which is the Negro, according to Theosophy. But of course, that's left out just like everything else. We gonna see what else is with this uh, ether of space. So Shalom, we got a tree free. Now here I stumbled across this link while surfing the wave in major concentration. And this word I came across is Koilan. Koilan is emptiness, the name given to space before creation. In the works of Char Charles W. Leadbeater, it is described as similar to the ether of space, which is pressed back into bubbles by the energy of the logos. These primordial bubbles are coiled into spiral formations. Ahab to non spiral. <laughs> With seven bubbles to each spiral, the bubbles are held together by the will of the logos. This is the spiral of the first order. The strands of the spirals are further coiled into spirals, making spirals of the second order. Lengths of spirals of the, of the second order are in turn coiled into larger loops, forming spirals of the third order and so on. All right, so they refer to this space as Koilan, which is the ether of space, which is why they don't talk about what this stuff actually is. They just keep saying space, <laughs> All right? And when we're digging on, um, of course, ether, it is the upper regions of space, my naga. So when we say you are star seed. We mean you are of the ether. That is the upper pure of air, the bright sky, the firmament, which is why they call you the Natas or the Satan. Because again, ether means to burn, to shine. Right? As did Lucifer. To burn. To burn. To burn, to shine, just like Tiamat, right? The shiny one. Let's get it back. The shiny one. Where is it? Right here. The shiny. Tiamat was the shiny. All right. So ether is the shining. We're just connecting back to the dragon that is Rahab that was broken into pieces. Which they say your asteroid belt is. Right. We're going to continue on. Peace, peace. So here, we're just getting this little uh, breakdown, right, of this plot for Jupiter ascending. And it says that Jupiter Jones is a Russian immigrant, <laughs> right, we're just talking Tartary, who spends her days cleaning toilets for rich people in Chicago. One day, while at a fertility clinic to donate her eggs for money, Jupiter is nearly killed by a group of evil aliens posing as doctors. Thankfully, she's rescued by the handsome half-wolf, half-human, genome-geneered Splice Kane Wise. All right, Kane Wise is his name, as in the Canaanite series, man. We just talking half-wolf, half-human, genome-geneered, right? <laughs> A flying skyjacker who's been sent by Titus of Brassix because Jupiter is believed to be a gen the genetic reoccurrence of 
the, the recently murdered matriarch of the House of Abrasics, and therefore entitled to a vast inheritance that includes owning the earth. All right. And this is what we were digging on. The fact that these reptilians, these Aryans, are matriarchal. All right. And um, these different genetic experiences are the things that were taking place. But, you know, they happen from a state, like I said from the beginning, you know, I didn't necessarily have correct. But now that we can see these things for what they are, we know exactly how to come at them. Right. And, you know, they want to talk, you know, red hair and giants. Right. <laughs> but they don't want to talk genetic experience. Experiments. Well, let's carry on. Because we're digging on Chewbacca. Right. He is a Wookiee, a tall her suit bipedal intelligent species original originating from the fictional fictional planet of whatever that would be all right chewbacca the red hair giant <laughs> all right with these you know the builders of tartary may be here we have the Wookiee you know they're a fictional humanoid alien okay and as we see you know they're covered up with much hair much like the Bigfoot you know one can't even say that this was inspired by such <laughs> let's see uh... yes. we aren't going to get into all that I guess right now but we can see you know based off the obvious right now, as you can see, they're talking about a galactic empire. They're trying to say this was a, a cosmic thing. You know. No doubt. Because these things aren't necessarily human in origin. Right? And we already, you know, we got in the book of Enoch that these stars, sons of God, did not hold their place. You know, we got that definitely. And we're digging on Bigfoot. They're known as the hairy men. Right? Bigfoot, also commonly referred to as Sasquatch, is a purported ape like creature said to inhabit the forests of North America. Tales of wild, hairy humanoids. That's exactly the, the, t the terminology they use to describe this Chewbacca. The Yeti. Alright? The Yeti and the Shetty. And, um, you can see right here, right? They were huge, man. Creatures with black, dark brown, or dark reddish hair of the likes right and you know he was always rolling around before we get there <laughs> he was always rolling around with with Han Solo right he was always rolling around with Han Solo You know, when we're digging on the 
the primordial, sometimes called the ancient age, once again, right? When we were digging on that Rahab in the ancient times. It says, this era is a time when living beings were all mutable. Legend states that during this time, there was no real separation between human, animal, and spirit beings. Each being had qualities of all three, and most could shift their bodies between multiple physical forms. These beings are sometimes referred to as the ancient beast men, beings caught somewhere between being humans, animals, and spirits. The first race to split off from these beast men is the ancient race of the serpent people, the Shetty, aka Snake Brothers. These beast men and serpent people worshiping terrifying ancient gods and and cathodonic spirits of whom were forgotten slumbering or dead in the present age right and this is just the shetty the shetty is what we were digging on earlier as far as these so-called reptilians right but this shetty sounds a lot like the yeti as we've seen with chewbacca they're interstellar <laughs> you know what I'm saying alright says Chewbacca's creation as a gentle hairy non-English speaking co-pilot was inspired by George Lucas seeing his own dog sitting on the passenger seat of his car. It is said that Chewbacca's name is derived from Sobaka, the Russian word for dog. See what's going on? They were just talking Canis Empire which is those that were teamed up with the Shetty and the Shetty came straight from the Aryans Alright, and we got a little bit of that in the beginning. So you can go ahead and finish that off. You know. So we're just talking about the Shetty. The Hopi were basically as isolated as could be, and their mythos remained pure. European influence on the core of their lore was a minimum as opposed to other Pueblo tribes. One persistent Hobie legend is that of the Snake Brothers or Shetty in the Hobie language. The Shetty were a race of reptilians as per their folklore. At the end of the first world, the Hopi were sheltered by a race known as the Anunnaki in the Hopi language and in English as ant friends or ant people. The Shetty, right? <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. All right. And they say it's an American thing to really, you know, take the acknowledgement of um, UFOs, right? They say that's an American thing. No doubt. Because we know what's going on with the Shetty. All right. Keep this in mind. You know, we're just digging on this. Here we have a brief history of ET, right? Earth. It says that um, before present. D equals the density slash dimension, right? Pre-human civilization about 705,000 years ago. The extensive Meldek Wars creates Meldek souls and metaphysical, metaphysical astral, not a fear. That is the space. This not a fear is the emptiness we were digging on. The emptiness, the void, the deep. We're talking space. The immense emptiness, right? That being 
the fear. Empty is the fear. So then they chart they started to incarnate the souls, right? They said this is the current asteroid belt. Alright, where this Maldek or so called Rahab was shattered into pieces, broken into pieces. Here we have the final destruction of the Mars civilization, the atmosphere soul transfer into 3D Earth bodies, beginning of human civilization. 3D evolution, the Martians, the native, other 3D confederations, the Yahweh aid to Martian souls, genetic cloning to sharpen the senses, strengthening the mind, the light quarantine intensified around Earth. You see what's going on? Human lifespan 900 years. This is Adam. <laughs> I dig, look up under it. You know, the Orion group came down to what they refer to as Central America Easter Island these are the ether wars Lumerian civilizations right the harvesting of souls I mean look look at this we're talking about it right here all right spiritual calling from earth Maldek souls Bigfoot confederation Atlantis begins to develop. I mean, look at this, man. All right. Crystal power bell shaped UFO craft. Look, we, we own. You see what I'm saying? Pyramids, crystal healing. You know, those pyramids with crystal healing, healing. The crystallizations. <laughs> All right, because there's never been a time where your true origin has been tracked and pinpointed. They can't say at such and such. They don't know. They have no idea. We're gonna touch on this tab. And presentations to come. We're just going over a little something to show you about this harvest they got in motion. All right, because like we said, Han Solo was always with Chewbacca, and what was to you know Han Solo flying in? One of these things, once again, right? <laughs> Han Solo was smashing in this and had Chewie with him. Which lets me know that they brought this shit to you. And Han Solo, well, we'll get that in a bit as well. Alright? <laughs> well, I'm gonna dip off into a little presentation. Peace, peace. this up <laughs> we cannot make this up you know we're gonna bring it back because i got to but we can't make this up we just talking star season eat the wars you know what i'm saying this is this is way out but it's so not peace to the loved ones If you ever 
hear that thunder Put your eye to the sky, boy, and wonder Maybe there's a kingdom above the weather Oh, and whether you're gonna get on in Is a day Carry on, world, like some somber Beautiful stranger see what just happened <laughs> i'm gonna bring it back just a little bit i'm gonna ride out like that but you see what happened that transformation there buddy i mean look it's it's happening in real time right right before you we cannot make this up they walk through the gateway and look carry on world like some somber beautiful stranger Strangers are that strange. And what more can we say? A hub.